Good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, some of you are met already. My name is Jacqueline Vegas. I'm the Chief of Mission of uh, IOM in Australia and the coordinator for New Zealand and the Pacific. And um, welcome. Welcome, everybody. It's really a great pleasure, uh, you distinguished guests and colleagues, to welcome you at the, to the launch of the government of Japan funded a project for strengthening capacity, water control for responding to infectious diseases in the Pacific Island countries. The International Organization for Migration, IOM, uh, works globally to help ensure the orderly and humane migration, um, management of uh, migration for the benefit of all. We strongly believe that human mobility, both internal and international, can be a powerful driver of sustainable development. Ensuring safe, orderly and regular migration in the Pacific can play a vital role in supporting the achievement of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, including through implementation of planned and well-managed migration policies. Through its extensive team presence in over 10 Pacific countries, IRM is committed to supporting member states to facilitate this in line with the rule of law and the promotion of human rights. In the Pacific region, IOM is guided by the IOM Pacific Strategy, which strives to contribute towards enhanced resilience, governance and sustainable development in the context of human mobility in the Blue Pacific. IOM is committed to strengthening capacities, policy frameworks, and data to protect and assist migrants in situations of vulnerability and promote safe migration and borders. Now, because images can say much more than words, I would like to show you a very short video to illustrate the policy that I was just referring to. We are proud to present the IOM Pacific Strategy, which will guide IOM's multi-country programs in the Pacific over the next five years. The goal of the strategy is to contribute to enhanced resilience, governance and sustainable development in the context of human mobility in the Blue Pacific. The strategy links closely with the UN 2030 Agenda Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, to leave no one behind, and the Global Compact on Migration, as well as key Blue Pacific priorities. The strategy is informed by the IOM Global Strategic Vision and will support the mainstreaming of migration in the new UN Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework. Pacific Islands face a range of challenges, including the adverse impacts of environmental and climate change, social and economic barriers to participation for labour migrants, and limited data and knowledge on irregular migration to keep borders and migrants safe. Safe, orderly and regular migration has never been more important in the Pacific. IOM strategy has three program pillars which respond to Pacific needs. It also has four cross-cutting considerations, recovery from COVID-19 pandemic, gender, disability and social inclusion, mobilization and research, data and evidence. Pillar one aims to enhance resilience to climate change and disaster-related human mobility. To help achieve this, IOM will support government-owned collection and use of research and evidence to promote improved climate-related mobility responses and disaster displacement management. Develop harmonized climate-related migration policy and legal frameworks and build the capacity of government and communities on disaster management. Pillar 2 aims that labour migrants and their communities benefit from effective and well-managed labour mobility for human development. To help achieve this, IOM will support pre-departure and reintegration efforts for labour migrants. Enhance impact of remittances through enabling, engaging and empowering diaspora. Strengthen the governance and coordination of labour mobility systems. Pillar 3 aims that Pacific Islands have strengthened capacities policy frameworks and data to protect migrants in situations of vulnerability and promote safe migration and borders. To help achieve this, IOM will promote safe borders through integrated border management and strengthen data collection and sharing. 
support government and civil society to better identify and provide protection to vulnerable migrants. IOM hopes to achieve the goal of the IOM Pacific Strategy through strong partnerships at the local, national, regional and international levels. We invite all partners working across the Pacific to join us on this journey. Together, we can enhance resilience, governance and sustainable development in the context of human mobility in the Blue Pacific. Thank you, uh, Eugene. Now let's zoom into the project that we are launching today. The project will work across seven Pacific Island countries to support uh, Pacific socioeconomic recovery from COVID-19 through safe resumption of border management operations and strengthening the capacity of Pacific Island countries to respond to public health crises in the region. In particular, the project strives to enhance seamless border management infrastructure technology, equipment, and improved capacity across the Pacific Island region. In Samoa, the project will work to upgrade the border management information system and work has already begun in this respect. The project will also work with the Pacific immigration development community to strengthen an integrated and coordinated approach to border management in the Pacific, including the sharing of border-related information. We provide our sincere gratitude to the government of Japan for providing the funding for this crucial project and for their ongoing support to Pacific Island countries. The work of IOM uh, also ties in well with the United Nations in the Pacific, particularly through the newly developed UN cooperation uh, framework. The framework outlines common UN programming, driving planning, implementation, monitoring, reporting, and evaluation of collective UN support for achieving the 2030 Agenda. Through a newly established IOM office in Samoa, IOM looks forward to working more closely with the resident coordinator, multi-country office in the country. For many years, IOM has been planning to set up its office in Samoa to better support the government, as well as specific regional bodies based in the country. My team member, Imogen, many of you know her already, has been based in Samoa for the last two months, working with counterparts and stakeholders. And we are most pleased that we are likely to have our permanent IOM team on board in Samoa around July. IOM is looking forward to continuing to work um, alongside all partners, including the government of Samoa, regional organizations, United Nations agencies, and the resident coordinator office, as well as civil society, uh, private sector, academia, and development partners. Once again, uh, we thank the government of Japan for their generous contribution towards this project and thank everybody uh, present here today uh, for joining this project launch. And uh, we are looking forward to continued collaboration to uh, work jointly towards the outcomes of this project. And thank you very much. And please join us later for a cutting the cake ceremony and a, and a lunch. Uh, I'll stop here and I would like to hand over the floor to Excellency Santa Kaisuko, Japanese ambassador to Samoa. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Jacqueline Wickers, IOM Chief Mission, Australia and Coordinator to the Pacific. CEO Peseta Numia Simi, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, CEO Agafiri Tomaima Shem Leo, uh, Ministry of Prime Minister and Cabinet, Mr. Jorun Sorensen, UNDP Resident Representative, distinguished guests, Talo Falaba. Uh, it is my great pleasure to be here today for the launching of the project, very long name, Strengthening the capacity of border control for responding to infectious diseases in Pacific Island countries. I think I'm correct. Yeah. <laughs> this project represents an important step forward in our collective efforts to build a more resilient and effective immigration systems in Samoa and across six Pacific Island countries, including Federated States of Micronesia, 
Papua New Guinea, Republic of Marshall Islands, Tonga, Tuvalu, and Vanuatu. Japan is honored to be a partner in this project, and we are pleased to cooperate with the International Organization for Migration, IOM, through continuous assistance for recovering from COVID-19 in the field of immigration. As we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic has brought unprecedented challenges to our societies, economies, and health systems. But it has also reminded us of the importance of international cooperation and solidarity, especially in the face of common threats, such as infectious diseases. The launching, launching of the project today will focus on the strengthening the capacity of border control authorities in the seven Pacific Island countries to detect, prevent, and respond to infectious diseases, including, including COVID-19, and nowadays measles and influenza. Furthermore, at the Pacific Immigration Directors Conference, PIDC, is located in Samoa, we are confident that Samoa will be a hub for this project. We firmly believe that the project will create opportunities for cooperation and exchange among border control authorities, as well as to build a stronger sense of regional solidarity and resilience. In closing, ladies and gentlemen, let me express my sincere appreciation to all the partners and stakeholders who have contributed to the development and launch of this project. We look forward to working together to ensure its success and to building a more resilient and effective immigration system in Samoa and the Pacific region. Thank you, Fafetai. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, remarks, Japanese Ambassador. I would now like to welcome uh, CEO of Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Ms. Pesetta Numia Simi, to provide some remarks for us today. Excellencies, um, Ambassador of Japan to Samo, UNDP Resident Representative, IOM Chief of Mission, ladies and gentlemen, my remarks will be brief but will be premised uh, from the perspective of Samoa, being the chair of the Alliance of Small Island States in relation to this very important uh, project. We acknowledge the coming to fruition of the mul this multi-country program across seven countries in the Pacific. The funding support by the government of Japan, all the partners involved, including PIDC, the IOM, the government of Japan, that will cooperate to ensure that there is an integrated and well-coordinated approach to border management in the Pacific. And of course, all our national stakeholders who are here with us. We acknowledge a peculiarity of this project for Samoa in that we were able to take a given formulation and adapted it to suit our needs. We thank the program administrators for the flexibility and willingness to respond accordingly because we wanted to demonstrate that we are a partner country and not just a recipient. While it is so convenient and probably more cost effective to formulate a common platform for a group of countries, we should not forget that regardless of size and commonalities, we should not overlook the diversities, which if well addressed, will lead to more sustainable development initiatives. Addressing diversity will lead to a deeper understanding of what our vulnerabilities are within the context of small island developing states like Samoa. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much for your remarks today and I think really important points to keep in mind for all of us. I would now like to welcome CEO of Ministry of Prime Minister and Cabinet, Mr. Agafili uh, Shemlio, to give a short remarks. Aote manatua. Bye bye for no, but you might want to need die out. Be on a sound or yea, yeah, to to what more I to. Yeah, a for you daffing. Yo, there would auto I might have no fear, yeah. Uh, the day out to talk on the time, you know. Yeah, a while that to farm with my old war. My air, my old war, uh, that to part of the year. Yale am tongue of statue, farm with my time, who am on that to my law. Uh, the protocols have been observed, um, by the previous uh, speakers. I shall now, um, Focus my comments at the national level uh, in terms of uh, the development of the border management system over the last 20 years and the forecast and I'll look into the future of how this very important project will provide for Samoa in terms of border management and border security. Border management is uh, an imperative component of national security. Its layers and functionalities are customized to serve countries' needs and priorities, to ensure maximum security and protection of citizens' properties, the environment, and the traveling public. Border management systems have been used extensively to strengthen vigilance at the travel at the borders and travelers' profiling at reg regulated ports of entry. For Samoa, the first automated border management system was commissioned in 2005 uh, through the support of uh, uh, the government of Australia. The PMS was introduced at the time uh, when the numbers of incoming and outgoing passengers recorded in Samoa were about 40K, 40,000 a year. The trend of arriving and departing travelers continued to increase over these years. And in 2018 and 2019, just before we were hit by COVID, um, the immigration through the border management system pro processed on average 240,000 travelers entering and departing Samoa through the border management system. This including returning residents, visitors, uh, and crews of aircraft arriving at our ports of entry. For almost 20 years now, we have witnessed the value of having this tool at our borders because of its real-time data collection capability and tracking of movements at our borders, as well as assisting our immigration officers to monitor entry and departure of high-risk travelers, the so-called persons of interest. In this day and age, border security risk and threats have reached new levels. Traditional border security risks such as transnational crimes, smuggling of illicit drugs, weapons and people, frequent movement of persons of interest, human trafficking and quarantine and biosecurity challenges are on the rise. Our recent experience with the COVID-19 pandemic brought forth a completely new facet to our national security response. In our concerted efforts to safeguard Samoa from being hit early, while focusing on our vaccinations required greater coordination and vigilance at the borders. Swift changes were made in our frontline operation with our health professionals taking over the first line of defense, working closely with other border agencies. Border closure, repatriation flights, multiple layers of health screening and mandatory isolation suddenly became normal requirements of our national border management. This project that we are launching this morning is timely, as it relates directly to strengthening border management capacity to respond effectively to border security risks and threats including infectious diseases. In support, our efforts for post-COVID-19 uh, post recovery through safe resumption of border uh, operations and enhanced management, technological infrastructure, and capacity development. At the recent meeting of the Pacific Immigration Development Community that was held in PNG two weeks ago, we shared experiences from Pacific Island countries 
on border management systems. Other countries have more than 400 border management systems. Others have added uh, new capabilities over the years to respond to growing needs at the borders. And for us, for Samoa, we're extremely happy to embark on this project, working closely with the IOM uh, to upgrade our border management system. Through this upgrade, we will add new capabilities to the current PMS that we are using to strengthen our passenger profiling, uh, facial imaging, data analysis and management, and synchronizing of passport issuance and receipting functionality, to name a few. In the future, we hope to migrate to integrated border management, whereby systems can sync and talk to each other beyond our national borders in a timely fashion and to share relevant information to help immigration officers make informed decisions at the borders. New technology allows for advanced passenger profiling and information. And like many other countries in the Pacific, including Samoa, all incoming travelers, immigration status are determined upon arrival in Samoa. Meaning that the immigration officers will need to be well equipped with the support of advanced passenger information and profiling to help with their decision making. As acknowledged by my colleague Pistar, uh, we acknowledge the assistance and funding from the government of Japan and our partnership with the IOM. Um, and we value this project as part of our drive to ensure that Samoa's national borders are secure and that our citizens are safe. We look forward to working together with uh, uh, all of you, uh, particularly with the setup of the IOM office in Samoa. We look forward to bigger and better things. Uh, through this partnership and also working together with members of the National Security Committee and border agencies who are users of this PMS to realize the full benefits of the new capabilities of our PMS. May the Lord bless this project and all the glory be unto him. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your remarks and indeed we're very excited to finally be uh, embarking on this journey and working together and hopefully this is, yeah, like you say, just the start of, of many more things that we can work with uh, the government in Samoa to, to work towards, yeah. So thank you. Uh, I would now like to invite Mr. Jorn Sorensen, the UNDP resident representative, to speak to us today on behalf of uh, Simona. She's unfortunately not here, the resident coordinator for the United Nations. So I welcome Mr. Jorn. Honorable uh, Senator Keisuke, Ambassador of Japan to Samoa. Honorable Pesitan Simi, CEO, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Honorable Agafili. Shane Leo, CEO of Ministry of Prime Minister and the Cabinet, representative for the Secretariat for the Pacific Immigration Development Community, and uh, my distinguished colleague, uh, Jacqueline Rikers, IOM Chief of Mission, Australia, and coordinator to the Pacific. Very pleasant good morning to you all, and a warm welcome to Samoa for our UN colleagues visiting uh, Samoa, and I understand for some of you the first time and we are looking forward to uh, strengthen our collaboration with IOM and to the office being established in the coming weeks and months to support Samoa and the region. I'm pleased to address this uh, launch event today on behalf of the resident coordinator, Dr. Simona Marinesco, who regrettably could not be here in person, but has asked me to convey her sincere greetings and very best wishes and these remarks. The project for strengthening capacity of border control for responding to infectious diseases in Pacific Island countries has arrived at a very opportune moment. The world and the Pacific region have on balance managed to reign in the effects of the coronavirus pandemic, but we see many other challenges coming at us globally and for the region. However, thankfully, we are now at a stage where we can focus on preventive measures to mitigate the impact of future pandemics and shocks of all nature to the region. On this note, and before I move on, allow me to 
a brief moment to applaud and thank the many development partners, amongst them Japan, New Zealand, and Australia, and the UN agencies, particularly WHO, and Pacific Island governments for the excellent work and collaboration that has helped secure Pacific borders, lives, and livelihoods. As of today, almost all Pacific countries can report 100%, 100% rate of vaccination against COVID-19, thanks to the many generous donations and speedy interventions by our development partners and the governments in the Pacific region. These joint actions were critical in starving off the biological effects of the pandemic, which in turn helped save thousands of lives, but which unfortunately could not prevent the economic impacts on <coughs> Pacific economies. In hindsight, Pacific economies have suffered terribly and particularly those heavily dependent on tourism. In fact, we can argue that the, next to the quantum of continued and historical impacts from climate change <coughs> in the Pacific, the pandemic's long-term effect on the region's GDP could be classified as one of the region's darkest moments. <coughs> For example, in Samoa, COVID-19 precipitated a standstill in the economy and an approximately 8% decline in gross domestic product in 2020, worth roughly 300 million Samoan Tala, from which the country is still feeling the effects. At the UN, we saw even more precarity in the Cook Islands, who lost almost five years worth of income and progress in <coughs> tourism in just one year. There are several more examples, but the key takeaway I could and I would like to make today is that looking at the highlights from the region's experience is that a positive probability of another pandemic dictates the need for a more proactive Pacific approach, not only to ensure mitigation of any future diseases, but also to dampen the potential negative economic fallout on the region. It is in this vein that we welcome this partnership between the Pacific Immigration Development Community, the Government of Japan, Government of Samoa, and the International Organization of Migration. The, pro the project demonstrates that we have learned from the pandemic. Indeed, it was a rare moment to take stock of the Pacific's many vulnerabilities. COVID-19 laid bare several issues that have hamstrung the region's development for decades, including through its lack of resources and narrow resilience. Surely today, we have every confidence that the knowledge, infrastructure, and capacity that this project now brings will help to fill these gaps, and by consensus, assist in strengthening the resilience of its beneficiaries. Closing borders, as we have seen, is one way to prevent viral spread but it can have unexpected negative effects, particularly for tourism economies and other sectors dependent on the free movement of people and goods. It is our hope that by reinforcing the capacity of Pacific governments to better screen, contain, and devise appropriate policies for responding to future viruses, that we will in turn help support the continued movement of people and turnover of Pacific economies. This is crucial. Note between 2020 and 2022, according to the UN's Human Development Report, owing to the coronavirus pandemic, the world has lost, the world has lost over 25 years progress in reducing poverty and many countries in the Pacific region are now not able to achieve the SDG targets by 2030. At the same time, the slow progress to address climate change at the global level threatens even more pandemics, given the link between change in climate and the forecasted rise 
in similar zoonotic diseases. In this way, providing countries in the Pacific with an enhanced ability to protect their borders such that it allows for continuity will not only save lives, but it will also protect against the widening of inequalities, particularly among women and girls. It will also prevent further slippage in our efforts to eliminate gender-based violence, keep children in school and educated, and prevent a reversal in the fight against poverty. With these comments, I thank you for a kind invitation and on behalf of the resident coordinator, thank you so much for coming here today and attending. Uh, and I wish the partners and beneficiaries every success in implementing this very important and timely project. So, for. Thank you.